Hey folks, welcome to Burr Mountain. This week, uh, what we're doing is it's the end of February, so we're planting our peas, both our snow peas and our shelling peas out in the garden. And I kind of just wanted to walk you through how we're doing this in a no-dig bed. Uh, it's really kind of pretty simple. This bed, uh, last summer, its last crop in it was uh, beans. And uh, we got some volunteer elephant garlic uh, years ago we're on here and they always keep popping up. So we just kind of let them grow out a little bit and then we just kind of harvest them. It's just kind of part of the natural ecosystem. Uh, last fall when we prepped the bed, what we did is we chopped the bean uh, vines down and I put a little bit of biochar over the top and then we put on about a half to three quarter inch of urban waste compost. Uh, over and just let it sit for the winter time to kind of work itself in and so now what we're at is a point where we're ready to uh, plant directly into this and put our our peas in so what we're going to do in this bed today we do have a couple of weeds that are trying to make their way through but if you notice that this thing has been sitting since gosh what was it like uh i guess so it'd be three months and very few weeds in it at all that was one i guess i got another one over here it looks like a little dandelion that tried to make its way through so there's nothing really in here uh that i need to worry about too much and what we can do is pretty much plant directly into this and so we'll use our dibble stick i'm just going to kind of smooth out any rough spots that you know might have happened over the course of the winter time so everything is kind of on a smooth basis and these are um, what we're going to put in this bed is shelling peas and they will hopefully be producing sometime late may we started the plants in the greenhouse uh, about now it's been about a good month yeah, they were started week five. So I guess that was essentially right around near the end of January. So it's been a little bit, we had a real cold snap last week. So we were gonna plant these last week. So we might be about a week or 10 days behind. Um, but what we're gonna do is, is uh, the first thing before we plant is we're gonna give these guys a good soak. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make a kind of a extract bath to kind of double dip into this and like i said what i got in this is i got some uh, compost soil with some worm castings in it a little air in my water line here i just need to put about oh probably two three inches of water in here and i'm using just an old paint strainer bag you don't even really have to do this. If you just wanted to, you just grab a handful of it and throw it in and get it all wet, it's fine too. But this is kind of what I just carried it out here. So once you can see all the humates and stuff like that that are getting in the soil, in the soil water here, this has got a lot of good biology in it. And our objective is to give these guys about a three minute or so soak. I just want to make sure that they're good and wet and that the biology that's in this extract is kind of coating the, the potting soil and the roots of the pea plants itself to kind of just give them a little extra boost. So while that's going on, what we're going to do next step is take our dibble stick and we're going to plant these guys fairly intense in this bed uh, what i'm going to do is make it uh, approximately about five rows wide and when i dibble in i'm doing about nine inch apart and i really shove it in and just kind of work it around because when we put these plants in we're going to want to have uh, the roots and the top of the the plug itself kind of covered so i'm really being able to kind of really get into the soil real easy Notice how no compaction there is in the soil and there is no uh, remnants left of the bean plants from last fall. So that's pretty amazing too. So that's kind of how we're gonna do it. So like I said, I'll be doing it uh, five row wide. 
And these are all, this this variety is called Bistro. We got it from Johnny's. Bistro. Bistro, Bistro, <laughs> peas, potatoes, tomatoes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're gonna be doing is, um, these are all like a, a bush type, so they're not a, a climber. So it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a really good mass. We haven't grown peas for a while. Not, this we did snow of, peas. But not this variety. But not shelling peas, and this is kind of a new variety for us, so. Yeah, so that's kind of the, the way this is gonna work. And they, they won't get much higher than this. And these hoops here, just for folks if they ask what the hoops are, the hoops are a three quarter inch utility grade um, irrigation pipe. You can get it at a home center or whatever. Uh, they sell uh, stuff like that for home gardening, uh, irrigation, etc. And uh, we just cut it to length, put it over some uh, old half pieces of a three eighths inch uh, fence rod. And this is what we're going to use to hold up netting to protect them. Because when we get finished, we're going to have to put some netting over to protect the, the plants from birds because birds will like to peck at the pea plants they're until also, they get a chance to get also established. They're used if there was a really wild snowstorm that comes in and we need to cover them with something. Yeah, if we needed to, uh, we could, uh, you know, like put a fabric cloth over it or... Plastic. Plastic, but honestly, these here. guys, these these plastic hoops don't hold much of a snow load so no but they're just always here so yeah if we need them we're they're prepared so what we can do is is lots of times is if we put fabric cloth over it, it kind of protects it you know from really hard freezing weather which we're hoping is over well historically speaking in our zone 8b we should be seeing more days like today where we're in the low 50s and um it's, rain it's drizzling <laughs> drizzling but you know that's kind of that's the maritime climate of the pacific northwest coming into play you know intermittent showers yep okay the uh pea plants have been soaking here for about uh about five minutes while we uh dug our holes and you can when i lifted up i could see that there was moisture on the top so i know these guys are really soaked really well and uh you know, at this point, if you had more trays, you can move in your next tray while you're working on, on the next thing. And if you look back over here to the holes, I know it looks kind of hard to see them, but uh, they went really fast. The dibble stick method is just uh, super fast to be able to get, get the holes in. So what we're gonna do and now is, this is kind of simple. We do have a few roots coming out the bottom. So these guys are kind of in a, in a good place. Now, when we sowed these things, these are not transplants into a six pack. So they've actually grown in here. They were germinated in here. And you can see that the moisture from the extract is soaked through pretty good. And what I'm gonna do is plant down into the bottom of the dibble and take some of that compost and just kind of press it around. And that way, what we're looking at is getting really good contact with the ground and they have uh, a good chance to develop a really good root system. We inoculated the, uh, the plants really well because they're slipping. And that's the other advantage of giving that good pre-soak on a six pack is you can get uh, them to slide right out real super easy so there isn't any tugging or breaking of the block or anything of that nature and if you come across this where you see oh these roots look a little bit maybe they're a little bit compacted you can kind of tease them loose a little bit before you put them in the hole that's not real bad though that's not real bad and you know occasionally you get duds you know like there's a dud there so i didn't get a full germination on the tray but based on uh, what i think i got is i think i have a roughly about 65 out of 72 which was really pretty good and this was brand new seed so yeah but i'm unfamiliar with the germination rate right it's not listed no they lots of seed companies used to do that all the time but now it's kind of hit and miss whether it's on it or not but 
sort of our standard is about 80 percent well we like to get 80 percent yeah, but what we find lots of times, especially if you're using seed that, you know, say from the prior year that, um, you That's know, we see, sure it happens. yeah, germination rate really drops off. Even though pea seed is supposed to be, I think, three years if stored correctly. Actually, uh, I've seen it both ways, three years and one year. Hmm. So... But I, the one that I feel most comfortable with is a seed, um, a book on seeds yeah. and how to, you know, store, um, gather them and store them and stuff like that. And I believe it says three years. And you had a post or you were going to put a post on Pinterest that showed um, various, seed, various seed lives and viabilities. Seed life, yeah. Yeah, and so be sure to check that out. I think you're going to do a community post on it, so where the link in Pinterest is. Yeah, I think that I got to get that in, in the, probably by Thursday. It's not comprehensive, but no, but it gives you a lot of very good right? start. <laughs> yeah, they had veg in there too. Yes. Or, yeah, so get, and good. And a little bit of herbs. Oh, that's even better. So, yeah, it was um, Clear Creek, I believe. Was oh, that who put it out? Yeah. So does that link back to their original site or what? I'm not sure. I haven't. That's why I'm still working on, you know, where it goes. Okay. <laughs> now, helpful. one of the things that we may end up with here this time of year is slugs yep. and we're going to kind of play that by ear and just kind of look uh, if we start to see that they're making a, a beeline for these guys we'll we'll use some sluggo which is um, it's an iron phosphate pellet and uh, tends not to have any long lasting negative effects on other wildlife but Mollusks like slugs and snails are attracted to it and uh, it disrupts their digestive system and pretty much terminates them. Uh, like with anything, it's a pesticide, you know, you always got to be, we try to be judicious about the use of it. If we see that, you know, it's just out of control, then sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Try to use the least nuclear method possible okay we got them all planted in we were a couple short so I think we ended up with uh, roughly about 62 plants out of 72 so we lost a few I've got a couple in here that are pretty small but they might make it so I just left them in anyway so overall I'd say it looks like the um, you know, they germinated pretty well. They grew up pretty well. We fertilized them every 10 days with a Jadam liquid uh, grass fertilizer. And um, since these are legumes, I didn't really use any nitrogen on them. Uh, they seem to respond pretty well just to the, uh, the grass JLF. And I used that at a dilution of 1 to 150 for the greenhouse. I was kind of juicing them a little more. Probably, maybe, maybe it might have been a little too hot, but they seem okay. And um, I think now at this next step, what we're gonna do, and we'll show you a finished picture of it, but basically we take some of the uh, poly weave bird netting and we'll put it over the top of the hoops here. That will keep deer from munching on them or birds from pecking at them. And for the most part, it'll give them a, a shot at uh, being able to get rooted in here and get growing. Uh, this time of year our temperatures are really mild. Well, more mild than not mild anyway. <laughs> and so um, already when I was planting this I could feel the ground is actually pretty warm. So we're not anticipating any ground freezing events or anything of that nature. So these should be, uh, you know, get a nice good growing through March, through April, and then hopefully, you know, by the time we get into mid-May we're we're pulling peas off of them. Yay. So, um, any other questions? Nope. It's just oh. there's signs, you know, we're pulling our daffodil blooms and crocuses and little Dutch iris are 
blooming, so it's spring, yeah. it's starting. Kind of follow those um, clues every so every year, and so I think we're right on schedule. But we'll keep notes just to see if this variety and timing and amount is good for. Well, I did plant them pretty intense, so we'll see. I may I may regret that. <laughs> But, but but we're testing this. To, is this enough for us to put some peas away in um, yeah. freezing peas? Um, not canning them. No, <laughs> never can peas. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> can peas in college. Yep. <laughs> so I guess that's it. I mean, it's really kind of a simple process. We just wanted to show you that the advantage of these uh, no-till beds that uh, Charles Dowding, this is his style, his system, and we've kind of adapted it for our vegetables. And uh, it really works well. And um, I mean, look, all winter long, no weeds. I pulled out, what, three? <laughs> Big deal, yeah. right? Yeah, more, it, more of a case of you have weeds in your paths yep the, the, well, the ones we're taking care of well our future for the paths is is we're going to um at least for the first round till we figure out some way of making a living pathways we're probably going to put down like old wood chips or uh bark uh rotted bark dust or something like that to kind of suppress the weeds in the pathways I'd rather have living but at some point, yeah, we're going to figure out some kind of living pathways. Uh, there's kind of herbs and things of that nature. And so we'll be experimenting with that as we go. And hopefully we'll get the fence built. Yep. We're going to get some lumber this year. We're going to pay it through the nose. <laughs> yeah. When it's at its most expensive. Right. <laughs> so, folks, I want to thank you for uh, watching today. This is just, uh, you know, start One of, of spring. One chores. Yep. So, uh as always in this precarious time, stay safe out there and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.